All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use dot loops. So uh, this one is designed for somebody who is just newer to the company or just hasn't used uh, dot loop and wanting to get using it. So uh, you should have received in your welcome email a login and been registered uh, to use dot loop. So first thing you're going to do is go to dotloop.com. Once you get into dot loop, um, the first thing you're going to want to look at is just to check right here to make sure that you've got the Century 21 Everest Realty Group logo. As long as you're seeing that logo there, then you know that uh, you're attached to uh, Century 21 Everest and you're in the right spot. So uh, just a couple of things to point out to you um, along the top here. Um, this first one here is just going to show the dashboard. This one, when you click on it, will take you to your loops, which is where I'm at right now is in this loop setting. This one would be uh, for any tasks that you have, which you can see I don't have any tasks assigned to me, but if you did, this is where they would show up. You can also see any overdue, completed, or all tasks there. Uh, people, this is going to be uh, where you're going to see all of your contacts and people that you have put into the system. So this first one here is just trusted service providers that you can go through and add people to who your trusted uh, service providers are. But down here is the contacts. And so here is where you're going to be able to see all the people that you've put into the system uh, to take a look at your contacts. So you're not going to really use that very much, but just so you know it's there. And then this one here is the templates. So this is where you're going to go to get any of the forms for Century 21. When you click on uh, templates here, you'll notice it's got documents here and then personal. So I don't have any personal documents in there. There's a spot for an inbox where if you had um, put some things into your inbox, the one you're going to use really the most is going to be this all C21 and MLS forms. If I click on that, you can see that's going to bring up all of our Century 21 forms along with the MLS forms. So any forms that you want to get, this is going to be the place that you're going to want to go to take to either print off those forms or even just to fill them out and use it into in dot loop. The other thing that I wanted to point out under these templates here is this manuals for agents training. So throughout um, your process of getting organized and set up with Century 21, there's going to be a few other systems that you're probably going to want to know. How do I use this? How do I use it? How do I get it set up? This is the place that you're going to want to come to get those. So again, it was under templates here come down and click on manuals for agent training down here and then you can see we've got the zap here that shows you how to get your zap system set up your vanity email uh, which so this is going to be used to forward your email if you don't want to use the century 21 email so this is how you would forward the century 21 email ordering your business cards this is going to give you a step by step of how to do that dot signal which is a system we use for on listings to get lead to capture leads uh, using text and things so that's one you'll want to look at this one is the dot loop setup so I'm showing you on this video how to do it but you may want to take a look at that as well golden ruler is going to be a system that uh, once you get listings will keep track of how many views it's getting online so how many people are looking at pictures and things and then this one is just going to give you a little more detail on creating a loop so again within dot loop here how to create loops this one is for the Cole Realty resource. So a lot of times people want to know where do I get phone numbers and how do I find phone numbers for either expired listings or just listed, just sold. That's what you're going to use this Cole Realty resource document for. And then Circle Picks. Circle Picks is the company we use with all of our listings to go out and take photographs of the new listings and things. And this will show you how to go through and get that account set up and how to order uh, pictures. So, so this is going to be a pretty important one that you're going to want to come back to and take a look at uh, many times. But uh, again, just as a reminder, the two things that you're going to use uh, dot loop is going to be coming in here to if you just needed a form and also the manuals. So, um, but really, you're going to spend most of your time probably back up here on the loops. So I'm going to go back to the loops here. Now, your when you log in, your setup may look just like mine, or I'm going to click over here on this switch to grid view, or yours may look like this. If it looks like this and you like it, great, you can leave it. But if you want to change that to have the grid view or list view, excuse me, you can just come up here and click on that and it switches it right back to this uh, list view. So um, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is just show you how to create a loop and how to put some documents in and assign people to the loop, those type of things. So 
Um, first thing that you're going to do is you're going to just come and click create loop. You'll notice here then it asks you um, what to name the loop. Typically what you're going to want to do in naming the loop is put the address of the property. Now every now and then you may get a buyer that they haven't identified a property yet and so at that point you may just want to put their name in there. So I'm just going to put in here that it's a test loop but um, you'll notice as you start to type in an address it's going to then start to search. So it's tied with Google and it's going to start to find actually that uh, the address for that property. Um, once you have selected that, then then you um, the next step will be down here. This uh, select a template. So when I click on that select template, you'll see it's got my name still up here of the loop. And then down here, you're just deciding what type of a template of, of this loop do you want it. Is it a new listing? Is it a buyer under contract? Is it a new listing and you just want to use a blank loop, which I'll explain what that means in a second. Um, and, or is it a buyer under contract that you want to use a blank loop or is it relocation listing or buyer so really you're just going to choose on these which ones you want so the new listing is going to create um, some placeholders that uh, will show you what forms you are probably going to need to add same with this buyer under contract this new listing blank loop just is not it's just going to be blank there's not going to be anything so I'll show you what that looks like so if I say that it's a new listing and I create the loop here that takes me into the loop and you'll see these grayed out documents here for the listing documents and also the under contract documents the idea of this is to really ha show you and let you know on a listing you're gonna at minimum and just want to reemphasize that at minimum you're gonna need these forms. Um, on an under contract, same thing. At minimum, you're going to end up needing these forms. So these actually aren't the forms. These are actually just a placeholder. Now, if I wanted to add the exclusive right to sell listing agreement, I can just come over here and click add. And then I can either add it to a document already saved on my computer or for the temp from the templates. So I'm going to just say templates, which is now taking me into the template and you'll notice here it's dropped me onto personal which I have no forms so this is where I'm going to want to come down to the all C21 and MLS forms so I click on that now it's loaded all those typically what I do is just start to type in in the search field here so the exclusive right to represent you'll notice then when when I go to that it brings up a number of those you can see this one's the relo so that one would be used for relocation so if it's not a relocation um, listing one that was um, assigned to you by a relocation department you're not going to use that one down here you'll notice this has that it's it shows six percent and then the 295 fee so at a minimum that's the one you need to use but some agents will say oh I want to use the six percent and charge a 395 or six percent and a 495 or six percent and a 595 and then you'll notice it goes all the way up to the 695 and then we jump to the listing agreement with a 7% commission in 295, 395, 495, 595, 695. So uh, you just decide which one that you're going to want to use. So I'm just going to go ahead and select this uh, one that's 6% and the 595. So once I click copy here, you'll notice now it says that it's imported that document. So I'm just going to say OK. And you'll see now how this is black here, and when I hover over it, it turns blue. That's showing you that that form now is actually there. So what I would want to do is go through and add all of the forms that I'm going to be using since it's a listing. I'm going to for sure need exclusive right to represent. That's the listing agreement. The MLS input form, this is the form that uh, is used to put all the data into the MLS. So I would want to go and add that. Now on this one though, sometimes what agents will prefer to do rather than add the document here and fill it out is to go over to the MLS actually and start to fill it out there and then just print off a PDF version, save that to their computer and then come back here and say add file and I would add it from a, the computer of what I've saved and, and import that into here as well. You'll also need seller disclosures and then eventually, um, which you probably are not going to have right when you first list the property, but right after you're going to order a preliminary title report from the title company. And once you get it, you're going to put that in here as well. So let's just say that let, we'll assume I've added all the documents here. Then when it's time to then um, fill those out, what I would want to do is come up here and select uh, this button here, which if I had all these documents would select them all. 
Um, or you can go through and just select them one at a time, which in this case, because there's only one, it's showing the whole thing anyway. So from here, then, what I want to do is I want to be able to go into that form and start to fill it out. Now, the one difference here is on this one. Well, in fact, let me add the seller disclosures just so you can see. So I'm going to add that from the templates. Come back to LC21 Forms. I'm going to type in disclosures, look for seller property condition disclosures. I'm going to add that here. It says it's imported. Okay, so now when I select this, um, I can then go in and start to fill all these documents out and get them um, put together. So um, I'm going to just click on the exclusive right to sell to begin with. So the first thing it's going to have me do is it's going to ask me now, do you want to auto fill? So meaning if you want to save some time, you can put in some default information about the seller and the property and you as the agent. And then that way it'll automatically fill those things in on the forms. You're not going to have to retype them. So what I would want to do is come over here and under these roles, uh, select who the seller is. So you'll notice the only person in there right now is me. So I would need to click on this add person. It would bring it up and then I can type in their full name and their email address. You can see it's, there's tons of information I can put in there, but the main things I want to add is their name and their email address here. Um, any other information that you have is great, but those are going to be at minimum what you're going to want to do. The other thing I would recommend doing is checking this uh, uh, send intro email. That's going to send them an email introducing them to dot loop. The one thing that I want to caution you on, and uh, I'm going to say this a few times, but is do not check this add to my team box when you're adding your seller. So um, one of the things just that to reemphasize is do not do that. Typically people will think, oh, well, I'm going to add them to my team because they're going to be part of it. That's not what this add to team is for. Add to team, the purpose of that would be we have um, transaction coordinators here at the office. And if you are wanting them to oversee your transaction, then you would add them to your team. But your clients, you don't want to add to your team. And now the reason for that is any, if, you, if I typed in my client here and click add to team, they're then going to be able to see every document that's in there. And that may not be a big deal to some, but to others that could end up being actually a pretty big deal of, I don't want my clients to see every single one of the documents that are in there because some of them may end up being some of our personal documents for the company, those type of things. So, so again, just the main things is to get in here is their full name, their email address, and then do not check this add to team. Again, just do not check that, but you do want to check send intro email. And then I'm going to add that person to, to the, uh, the loop. And then I would do the same thing for seller number two. Come in and add the person, um, type in the, the spouse or whoever. Listing agent, I'm going to select on that. And the, you'll see I'm already in there. I can select me. And then uh, I can type in the property address here, any information about the, the property, and then autofill. Once I click autofill, you can see it dropped my name in here. Now, if I had put in the names of the sellers, that would have dropped them in here as well as the, the for the names of the sellers. And if I had the property address, that would be showing up here as well. So from here, then I'm just going to go through, finish filling out the dates on here, um, you know, that I want for this, um, and then down here. You'll notice now, right now, it shows no one, and that's because I did not add sellers. If I had added sellers, it would be showing their initials right there and right there, and then down here, it would have their initials, and then here, it would be showing their name and their name right there. So it, that's why you want to autofill, because if for some reason you ever didn't autofill and you needed to go back later on and add it, if you come and just click on where you want that and come up here, assign to, it says no sellers. If I had people in here, it would have their names already in there. If I wanted to add a seller again, if I hadn't already, I could type them in right here. Again, do not check that box. Do check this box down here to introduce them. But that's how I would then assign any of these signatures. Now this one you'll know it show assigned to me as the listing agent. So I could just say, okay, I want to sign right now. It's going to bring up my name to say, is this how you want it to look? I can either draw my signature or adopt it and sign. I'm going to just say adopt and sign. You'll notice it's signed it. It's put the date and time that I signed that. 
and and so now I've signed it I would just want to make sure my clients are all put in here and instead of it saying no one like it does here that it has their initials there and their name right there and I would just go through each of the documents and then either do save and share which obviously I'm not going to do since I'm showing on this but if you're not quite ready to share it to them yet you can just save it so now it's saved but not shared to my client I can come back it's it's going to then always ask you, are, you know, are you sure you don't want to share it? Do you want to? I say, no, I don't want to. So it takes me back to the loop here. And then I could do the same thing with property condition disclosures. Again, that very first time that I open it, it's going to bring it up and say, do you want to assign the roles? So if I did now know who a buyer was, I could come down here and add person and put in their name and email address. Um, but typically, if you're representing the seller, you're not going to be putting the buyer information in there. So... I could just fill this out, autofill, click down here to autofill. Again, I didn't put anything in, but it would have the seller's name, property address, have all the spots for them to initial and sign. You can go through and get that taken care of. So that's essentially how you're going to um, get the documents filled out. Now, if, if I was ready to do that, again, I could just select this. This is going to give me all of those selected. Up here, I can either archive them which archive just would mean to remove them from this. Um, so they're still, you never really delete anything out of the system. It's just if it's archived, it puts it kind of in the background. And you can always get your archived documents back. Uh, so if I went ahead and archived those, you can see now it's taken that whole loop and got it, gotten rid of it. If I wanted to get it back, I just show the archived, come select all those again, and now they're they're back in there again so but again so from here if I was gonna share these I would select them I come click share it's then gonna ask me who do you wanna share it with now because I didn't have the sellers in there it's having me add them right here if I had add them there would be check boxes that I would just select who I wanted to send those to and then I would hit done and it'll share those so it actually doesn't really send the documents to your clients it's just gonna send them an email inviting them basically into this loop they then can click into the loop and when I do share these documents the other thing that I'm going to give them is the ability to either view only which obviously they're not gonna to wanna to do that when they're signing I'm gonna have either give them can sign or can fill and sign most of the time you're going to want to do the can sign, but uh, every now and then you may do a can fill and sign. Um, can edit in private is going to be something that pretty rare that you're ever going to give to your client. So most of the time it's going to be can sign or can fill and sign. And then again, as I said, you're going to then share that, click done. It'll then be shared to your client. Once they then do go and sign everything, it is then going to send you back an email notifying you that they have signed it and when you come in here it will say where it says not shared right now it'll say that it has been signed now once you're ready to turn that into the office so again if you're not using a transaction coordinator then this is how you'll handle it I'll tell you what you do differently if you are using transaction coordinator so if you're not and I was ready to turn this in and let's say I had this MLS input form as well I would just select those and then I would come up here and click Submit to Review. Once I click Submit to Review, that's going to then send this in, uh, up to um, the office staff for them to then go through and input the listing onto the MLS, get it actually published to the MLS. It also then is going to allow our compliance department to take a look and make sure that we have done everything that's the right way of how it needs to be. So if it is great if not they'll let you know what you're missing or what you need to do differently so that's a little bit of an overview of dot loop uh, where you can find the loops the templates those type of things um, and then as I said really I would say take some time to come over here into the templates go down here to the manuals for agent training and then look at this dot loop setup as long as creating a loop handout there's going to be some additional things that uh, that I didn't cover in this video that are in there things such as showing you how to get uh, notifications which ones to turn on and turn off things like that so and then as usual if you have any questions just let us know